Good morning, everyone. We are Data Wellness, and we'll be, we will be unraveling the culprits on your plate. We'll talk about how food consum we'll discuss food consumption to a nutrient-based level, as well as, as well as touch on how your eating habits influence your risk of certain diseases. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ron Matthews. I have a bachelor's in electrical engineering technology from the New York City College of Technology. And in 2021, I had a chance to conduct a research um, experiment with a professor uh, involving machine learning and the Internet of Things, which sparked my interest in the uh, data field. Hello again, my name is Janelle Abrahams. I'm a recent graduate of Florida International University. I graduated in August of 2022 with a bachelor's, with a bachelor's degree in computer science. Good morning, my name is Jinny Lee. I graduated Magna Cum Laude from Washington State University with a Bachelor's of Science in Pre-Med Biology. I was a manager at Amazon and a teacher, but my passion for data led me here in Dapton, and I finished my training as a data engineer. Hi, everyone. I'm Aditya Palapati. I also go by Adi. I graduated from San Jose State University this past December and got my bachelor's in applied mathematics and have some computer science background as well. So here are some of the following data sources that we use throughout our project. And on the next slide, we're gonna show some of the tools and softwares we've used throughout this project and show you how we're able to create our visualizations and come to our conclusions throughout the project using these. So hello again, everyone. Um, before we dive into food consumption, we'll talk about malnutrition. So what is it? It is the insufficient or excessive intake of nutrients. The insufficient intake of nutrients is often referred to undernutrition, which can lead to stunted growth, weakened immune system, and even an impaired cognitive development. The excessive intake of nutrients is often referred to as overnutrition. This is often paired with an energy imbalance, which can also result in what which can also result in diseases like obesity, cardiovascular illnesses, and type 2 diabetes. So here, if you look on the graph on the left-hand side, you can see the undernourishment over time. In our data set, we selected the top five countries which had the most consistent trend in undernourishment, and we added the United States as well because we'll be doing a deep dive on the United States food consumption. If you look, you can see that Angola and Samoa, Somalia had the most consistent trends of undernourishment. And we added the United States, as mentioned before, because we'll be doing the deep dive there. Here, we are looking at the population versus the food supply. We selected Afghanistan, Zimbabwe, and the United States because in the African countries, we saw that there was a consistent trend in a negative correlation or a somewhat negative correlation for population and the food supplies. And again, because we'll be doing a deep dive on the United States. If you look on the graph on the left-hand side, you can see that as the population increases, and then look on the graph on the right-hand side, as the population increases, you can see that the food supply increases as well for fats, protein, and calories, which are the food supplies that we use. If you look on the blue line on the population graph, you can see that as Afghanistan's population increase, and then you look over at the other graphs on the right hand side, you can see that the food supply has a negative correlation, meaning that as the population increases, the food supply is actually decreasing. And Zimbabwe has a similar trend to Afghanistan. However, it fluctuates, meaning there are some highs where um, Afghanistan have lows. And here we'll start our deep dive on US food consumption, starting with the calorie content in the food. If you look on the graph on the left-hand side, you can see the different types of calories, being it non-fatty or fatty. And we can see that for our data set, we had a lot of fatty foods with 96.2% of all the foods in our data set being or having fatty calories, with only 3.8 having non-fatty calories. And then if you look on the graph on the right-hand side, we can see that there is a correlation between fats and calorie content. And it is a positive correlation, meaning as one increases, the other also increase. And here we'll look at energy content by food. The energy content is still a calorie content, but in kilocalories. Um, what we found interesting about this was that for fats and oils, this here, 
you can see that it has a consistently high calorie count with no out layers. Out layers are the blood dots that you see across the graph. So here we would have the mean and up here we'd have the max. The all layers are those values that will be on the max in, within, the value, within the data range. And then if we look on American Indian or Alaska native foods, they are, they are somewhat consistently low calorie foods. However, there are some all layers that goes way above their max going over 800 kilocalories of energy. And here, this is a visual from our dashboard. Um, we look on calorie key influencer. So if you look on the graph on the left-hand side, this one right here, you can see that calorie increases with the sugar content. So the more sugar content you have, the higher your calories would be. We see a similar trend with protein. However, sugar, um, you get more calorie content with more sugar. Protein does give you a lot of calories as well, but not as much as sugar. If you look on the graphs on the right hand side, you can see that we had six segments and we decided to drill down in the first segment, which had the largest amount of calorie content, which was 485.3 kilocalories. We see that um, that 485.3 value is 271.4 units higher than the overall average of the entire data set, which was a simple 213.9 kilocalories. This number can be contributed or is influenced by carbs and fats. The higher the carb being, if the carb is greater than 40.77 grams and the fat is greater than 16.53 grams, we can see that we get a value that is higher than the entire average across the data set. This led us to look on the distribution of nutrients for the top five problematic foods. As you can see, they are listed below the graph. And as you can see, it's mostly fats and oil or even dessert foods. We had, the, um, we had butter oil having the most um, kilocalories at 876 kilocalories. But what was interesting is that we saw that it had the least amount of sugar. So the calories that are high in, so the foods that are high in calories usually or seems to have lower um, sugar counts. And similar, we see that the food that are high in sugar seem to have less calories. It was not surprising, not surprising that the powder dessert topping had the most sugar at 52.54 grams. And now we move on to Adi. So tell us about the agricultural side. Food is a key outcome of agriculture and in turn is a key input into good nutrition. Without agriculture, there's little food or nutrition, but at the same time, availability of food from agriculture does not always translate to good nutrition. To bridge the disconnect between agriculture and nutrition, we must work together across sectors to create a food system that is sensitive to nutritional outcomes. If we go to the next slide, the nation's food supply relies upon sufficient sources of healthy plants. A range of variables affect plant health, including the surrounding environment, and the extent to which they're protected from pests and disease. Healthy plants are vital to crop production and the quality and cost of nation, uh, the nation's supply of food, fuel, and fiber. Using data from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, analysis of trends within the US from 1961 to the early 2000s, we can see that the area harvested over the years has been relatively stable. You can see this in the chart to the right, where that first year in the 1960s uh, and then that last year in the early 2000s has stayed relatively st the same for the area harvested, while there were some fluctuations throughout the years in between. At the same time, the crop production has been steadily increasing in an upwards trend and continues to do so, as you can see on that chart to the left. If we go to the next slide, Crop production is very important, but the yields give us a better understanding of just how much of these crops become available to consumers. Through both charts, we can see that while some crop yields have stayed relatively stagnant over the years of analysis, others have followed upwards trends as well. You can see this especially with sugarcane and tomatoes, which in the most recent year provide the greatest yield and has had the greatest growth over time. Moving to the next slide. Through soil data analysis within the US, we can ascertain whether certain fruits, vegetables, or grains would thrive in certain conditions. By taking the data, we're able to create a model considering different growing aspects, such as soil pH levels, nitrogen, 
phosphorus and potassium concentrations in the soil, as well as temperature, rainfall, and humidity. A logistic regression, decision tree, and random forest model has been created, followed by cross-validation techniques to ensure that the models are low in bias and variance. To visually show this, a confusion matrix was created on a random forest model to show just how accurate it is. If we look at this chart, or the confusion matrix, the y-axis is the true labels. The x-axis is the predicted labels that our model is predicting. The diagonal is showing where they're meeting. Our model is pretty accurate, where it got most of them correctly, but there are some where it didn't predict exactly correct, which is expected from a model. An example of this is for the true label of chickpea. Uh, for the diagonal, it's at 99, showing that 99 of 100 times it is getting the correct prediction, but one out of these 100 times it was predicting for a mango when it should have been chickpea. Through the use of this modeling, we can assist farmers to determine the best crops to be grown while considering their nutritional content as well. Crops and nutrition is just one factor to human health, but now we'll look at a variety of food-related health problems within the U.S. As you can see Janelle's slide, the top five problematic food are processed oils and sugar, such as butter, cream, high fructose corn syrup. Excessive consumption of processed oil can clog arteries, resulting in circulatory issues and heart problems. Similarly, consuming excessive amount of sugar puts a strain on our body's glucose processing, increasing the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Moreover, overconsumption of calories contributing to obesity. Of course, there are other factors contributing health problems like genetic, different lifestyles, and so on. However, rising chronic disease are closely linked to poor dietary choices. I know all this because I have a bachelor's in pre-med biology. This graph illustrates major health problems across different weather zones in the USA. The states were grouped by weather, especially temperature and humidity, and then represented by cases of the health problems. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, and diabetes are dominant among other health problems. And regions with cold area experience higher incidence of health issues among compared hot weather zones. I used the data set from CDC Center for Disease Control and Prevention that was released in December 2020, which covers the entire 50 states, including District of Columbia, targeted public health prevention. When you go on the next slide, this graph portrays food-related health problems in selected states. Diabetes, heart disease, and strokes are exhibiting similar rates. However, obesity rates are vary and show significant cases among the state. Hawaii has the lower obesity rate, and Montana, the most rural states, as well as the highly urban states of California and New York show similar level of obesity. Alaska, the smallest population and coldest climate state, displays the highest prevalence of obesity. When you go on the next slide, this graph depicts health problems by regions in the USA from 2019 and 2020. Middle West, Southwest, such as Texas, Georgia, Alabama have a high rate of health problems, while the Southwest and Pacific Northwest, such as California, Arizona, Nevada, Oregon, Washington have the lowest rate of health problems. This graph also tells us that diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity are major health problems in the USA. Next slide, please. When comparing obesity to other health problems, there are 230,000 cases of obesity reported between 2019 and 2020. And on the right side of graph, visualized obesity increased by 269% from 2004 to 2017. Next, Shoban will deep dive in obesity. 
and deep dive ourselves. So hey, everybody. Uh, I created this chart using data from a survey centered around obesity in the U.S., and it displays the uh, percentage of obesity by states. I conducted my deep dive by comparing the states that have the uh, two highest rates of obesity, in this case, Alabama and Mississippi, which both have an obesity percentage, percentage of 39%, and the two states that have the lowest percentages of obesity, Colorado and Massachusetts, which both have around 24% uh, obesity by per uh, population. I compared all these values to uh, the national average of obesity and found some inter interesting results we'll see in the uh, next slide. So in this slide, I'm comparing the obesity percentages of each state that I mentioned previously, along with the national average from the years 2011 to 2021. And there are two interesting things I'd like to point out in this um, chart. So the first one is the near constant uh, percent difference between the states that have the highest rates of obesity and the states that have the lowest percent of obesity, which is around 15%. I find it very, very interesting that it was a uh, constant. Um, the second thing I'd like to point out is the increase in uh, obesity is shared between each location over the uh, decade, which is a 5% increase per 10 years. Um, and the next slide, I'd like to uh, uh, check out some factors that might contribute to the uh, increase per uh, state. So I wanted to compare the demographics of the uh, individuals that took uh, participated in the uh, survey. And gender doesn't really seem to play a factor in uh, obesity, surprisingly. But um, higher uh, people who have achieved higher rates of uh, education, income, and lower, lower um, age groups have uh, lower chances of being obese. Um, I believe if I focus on the age group, uh, the lower age group, I can find a, a correlation to why they may have lower rate of obesity, which is shown in the next slide. So states that have uh, higher um, activity levels, um, to no surprise to anybody, have lower rates of obesity. In this case, uh, Colorado and uh, Massachusetts have the higher rates of obese uh, activity levels compared to the previous uh, slides where they had the lowest rates of obesity. And uh, Mississippi and Alabama have the lowest rates of um, activity levels, whereas they had the highest rates of uh, obesity. Now, this may explain why on a state level there's such a, a big difference, but in the next slide, I'd like to um, uh, point out a reason why there might be an increase in obesity over time. So from 1970 to 2021, the amount of food eaten per capita, which in this case is per person, has been increasing over time. Um, fun fact, in 2021, uh, the amount of food in per person on average uh, per American is 900 pounds of food, which is vastly different from the average in 1970, which is around uh, 700. Uh, finally, in the next slide, uh, I'd like to bring us to our conclusion. And uh, food with uh, high fat content tend to have uh, high calorie content which uh, increases the chances of obesity. Uh, we're able to make a model which can determine which nutritious foods can be uh, produced and distributed to consumers. And while it is true, vegetable products may have the most nutritional value, high consumption of these pro uh, products paired with a bad overall diet and little exercise will not lower the risk of diseases. And factors that may influence obesity include location, activity levels, and certain consumption. And in the uh, next slide, I'd like to open for the questions, but also point out some QR codes that we have. So the one on the top leads to our GitHub repo, and the one to the bottom leads to a custom web page that I made um, that disclosed more information about each uh, uh, person in this uh, uh, presentation. Uh, so links to our LinkedIn and our GitHubs. And uh, thank you. Excellent job, Data Wellness. I know we're going to keep your presentation in mind as we pick out our, our lunches and the meals to celebrate getting through the cohort. <laughs> so your group was a group of four. In some ways, that's good. In some ways, that's bad. So what technologies helped collaboration? And were there any that were particularly challenging? Um, definitely used a lot of GitHub. Um, a lot of it was just messaging through Teams, keeping everyone posted and then check just to know where each team member was. Um, 
but overall it was just like sharing things through screen share when we hop on calls github so we could do pull requests and look at each other's work as well and just to like help make sure everything worked together and coincided and made sense as a whole and were there any that that made it tough to work work together that weren't conducive to group work uh also get <laughs> because <laughs> um yeah we ran into some issues with uh uh merge conflicts but uh we got around it also yeah, probably, I wanna... uh, i'm sorry <laughs> I wanted to thank you. I wanted to thank you, Sharon, that uh, pull out all these things together, put it in one place. Uh, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. As as I mentioned to a previous group, you know, there there's small data is tough enough to work with. Big data is a whole nother beast. Um, but you've done it. So great job.